today. We made it through another week.
what you came to do. But we came to praise him today. We came to give him the honor and the glory. So at this time, we will prepare to receive our prayer from the Reverend uh, Charles Phillips. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, O oh Lord Jesus, for thou art great, thou art mighty, thou art our all in all. And this morning, O oh Lord, we come because, yet again, Lord, we've made another week. We've had an opportunity to learn and to grow. We've had an opportunity to see thy greatness, O oh Lord, to recognize, Lord, that truly we are in a fallen world. But you are the great God. You are the one that we can count on, Lord. And even though sometimes it seems like you're not there, we know you're there. Because your promise is as good today as it was all the way back when David was killing the lion, when he was biting the bear, when Samson was beating many Philistines with a job on Lord. You are the same today as you was back then. And Lord, you keep your people. For if we are called by your name, yeah. if we are humbling ourselves, if we're seeking thy face, if we're turning from our wicked ways, Lord, you said you would kill our enemies. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we thank you, Lord. Yeah. And that's true today. Just as true as it was back then. And Lord, those are the truths that we can stand on. Those are the things that we can look out into a world that seems to be so chaotic. And no more than guess what? Peace that passes all understanding is still part of all that we see. But we recognize that it's not in what we feel, but what you are doing for us. So Lord, as you gave us life today, we thank you, Lord. As you provide a place for us to come and worship thy precious and holy name, we thank you this morning, Lord. And Father, more importantly than that, we just thank you for providing for each and every need. Lord, you said, I will not lead you. I will not forsake you, but I shall keep you. So we said thank you this morning, Lord. For we are blessed, so blessed, because we have a Father that this time looks low and meets every need according to his richness. Lord, we give you glory. We thank you for our pastor. We pray that Lord, that you would keep her, that you would show her, that you would help her for her help me, Lord, that you would keep him, that you would show him, that you would help him, oh Lord, that they may continue to move on forward in the power of God the Father, Christ. We say thank you. Thank you for every person assembled under the sound of my voice, Lord, that came with one purpose in mind, and that is to worship and praise the most high God and give him all the glory, for he is worthy of each and every blessing and every praise. So we give you the glory this morning, Lord, and we say thank you, thank you, thank you. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray this prayer forevermore. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Phillips, for that powerful prayer this morning to remind us that God hears our every cry and hears our every moan. So we are so thankful for that. Amen. At this time, we will prepare to receive our scripture reading. And you know, we got a new preacher in the house. Amen. Amen. Um, ordained. Yeah. Called and ordained. Amen. Yeah. And he's going to come forward and read our scripture this morning uh, for your hearing. Amen. Praise the Lord. The scripture reading is coming from Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and continuing to verse 11. The Lord spoke his word to Jonah, the son of Amittai. He said, leave at once for the important city, Nineveh. Announce to the people that I can no longer overlook the wicked things they have done. Jonah immediately tried to run away from the Lord by going to Tarshish. He went to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. He paid the trip and went aboard. He wanted to go to Tarshish to get away from the Lord. 
The Lord sent a violent wind over the sea. The storm was so powerful that the ship was in danger of breaking up. The sailors were afraid and they cried to their God for help. They began to throw the cargo overboard to lighten the ship's load. Now Jonah had gone below deck and was lying there sound asleep. Verse 11 says, the storm was getting worse. So they asked Jonah, what should we do with you to calm the sea? The word of God for the people of God. Amen. We thank Brother Mark for that scripture reading this morning. We want to just greet you in the matchless name of Jesus on this fourth Sunday in the month of January. We are almost almost finished um, celebrating the first month of a new year. Letting us know that time waits for no one. Amen. And time moves on. Uh, you will, as always, receive your announcements um, electronically. Today, I ask that you continue to lift them up. I will just highlight a couple of things that I want you to draw to your attention. Please be on the lookout in your mail this week. I know the mail is unpredictable, but hopefully <laughs> it's getting better. Uh, for your information about our 20 in 21 commitment. And uh, please uh, be responsive. Uh, we solicit your prayers, your commitment as we move forward in this new year. So please be on the lookout in your U.S. Postal Snail Mail for the information. Amen. Um, and we pray that you will find uh, something there that will cause you to draw closer in your level of commitment to the kingdom work that God has called us to do. Also, uh, as I shared with many of you, um, and as she shared with those of you who were on our official board meeting, uh, we, one of our ministers is um, relocating. Uh, her, she is, wants to be closer to family and her daughter is in Virginia. Uh, she has no uh, immediate family here in the Atlanta area. Her sister was here, and now she has relocated, uh, sister, um, she has located to North Carolina. So I think that sort of was the last tie to Georgia, amen, other than Mount Zion. Uh, but I can understand as we uh, mature that we want to be near to family so that we can, um, you know, have someone we can call on in our time of need. So Reverend Patrick Clay Joyner will be relocating to Virginia. We shared that in our official board meeting. Uh, she has spoken and uh, we wanted to do something before she got out of town and the month just got away from us. I mean, you know, here we are celebrating, uh, you know, we were so glad that the political thing was over and then it was the electoral college and then it was the insurrection and then it was the uh it's just been one thing after another and it's hard to believe that we are almost at an end of a month so you will be receiving information we're going to do a little drive-by goodbye on thursday that's the per the uh, weather forecast that is the best day it's not the warmest day but it is the day with the least amount of chance for rain. And so we will be driving by uh, on Thursday evening to say goodbye to Reverend Pat. Not goodbye, but just farewell. Uh, she will still stay connected to us. We are a virtual church right now, so it doesn't matter whether she's in North, uh, her uh, sister Eldora, um, she is in North Carolina and she listens every week. Uh, so Reverend Pat, will, you will still be hearing her voice and she will still be connected to Mount Zion as long as God speaks that into her spirit. So we will just be saying farewell, uh, not goodbye. And so that will be on Thursday evening. You will receive the information via calling post and via our text messaging alerts. So if you are available, 
we ask you to uh, set aside some time so we can honor this faithful servant uh, that God placed in this place who has been supportive of the ministries of Mount Zion and has shown herself worthy uh, of this honor. And we thank God for all that she has done. Uh, we continue to um, just ask you to continue to support us, continue to connect with us on all of our social media platforms, continue to share the information with family and loved ones, uh, ask them to connect. Uh, we would love to have them join us on Facebook. We would love to have them join us on YouTube. Uh, when you go on YouTube, there's a little bell up in the corner. You can just click on that bell. You can ring that bell and it will sign you up for notifications. So it will let you know when Mount Zion AME Church College Park is going live. You don't even have to try to remember. It'll send you an alert. Uh, so you can do that. Of course, our conference line remains open. We also uh, are thankful for those who continue to support the ministry that we do here at, Saint, uh, at, at Mount Zion. Even in the midst of a pandemic, God has blessed us uh, to still be a viable beacon of light in this community. And we are continuing to look at other ways that we can expand our engagement with the community uh, because God commanded us to go the, ye into all the world, not to just stay behind these walls. And so the ministries are going forward, the work is still being done, and we thank each one of you who continue to support the ministry by sowing your seeds of support uh, through your finances, and we encourage you to continue to do so. You may do so via Cash App. Uh, you see all of that listed on the screen. Please uh, send your support via our Cash App. We also have Gillify. Look for Mount Zion AME Church College Park, so you're giving to the right Mount Zion. And then, of course, you can also mail it to our P.O. Box, uh, the P.O. Box is always available for those who want to use regular mail. And that information is also showing up on our, on our page. And then, of course, we have a secure lockbox right here at the corner. So if, you, if you're passing down Riverdale Road and you just want to get out and take a drive one day, you can just drop it in the mailbox. It is locked and secured. No one can get in until someone comes with the key and retrieves whatever it is you have left for us. And so we just thank you for continuing to be faithful over that which God has entrusted you with. And we continue to be faithful stewards of the work that God has called us to do. Amen? Amen. We just thank you so much for everything that you are doing. And you know, um, it's gonna be preaching time in a minute. Uh, and in this uh, season, we have been in the midst of a sermon series, and today we conclude that sermon series uh, talking about the concept of time. And so today we enter into our final sermon in that series. Uh, the time is now. The time is now. We can't put it off. We can't hold back. We can't time does not wait and so God has called us for such a time as this so as you reflect on your commitment you reflect on your relationship with God what is it that God has called you to and then whatever that is do it with all your power and with all your might we're all created for a purpose and God has ordained us in this kingdom to do his work. As we began to prepare for the preach word, the praise team is going to come back and begin to set the atmosphere as we prepare to go before God's holy altar and receive that which he has given to us for this day. So won't you just celebrate them this morning as they prepare to come. They have been so faithful. I am just so, so thankful for how God always gives you just what you need when you need it. 
And so I want to thank this praise team. I want to thank these musicians who faithfully come and who faithfully serve. And I thank God for continuing to put a hedge of protection around us. Yes, when we came back into the church, we had a little rocky start. But since then, I think, you know, sometimes I people say, you know, God is not in, you know, don't, don't, don't give, well, sometimes don't blame God, but then don't try to put, connect everything to God. But I, I'm a God connector. And so I believe sometimes God does things just to see where our faithfulness is. You know, he, 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 he allows some stuff to happen. And he said, I'm going to see if you just go, are you really serious about what you're doing? Or, or is it at the least little amount of trouble are you going to run and, and give up? And so we pressed through. We persevered. We prayed and said, Lord, I don't know what you're doing, but uh, we 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 going to stay on the watch post. We're going to stay in the tower. We're not coming down. We're going to keep singing. We're going to keep praising. We're going to keep preaching. And since then, God has been faithful. And I thank God for what he is doing. So as they come, God, continue to bless them, but continue to cover them, continue to protect them as they do that which you have called them to do. Amen.
scripture that speaks to the subject of time. 
It comes from a book that I remind people sometimes when um, people have been known to misspell my name. They spell it phonetically instead of uh, grammatically. And so sometimes, you know, that old part of me pops up and I say, oh, evidently you don't read the Bible. <laughs> There's a whole book about me in the Bible. And it's spelled E-S-T-H-E-R. So if you would travel with me today to the book of Esther, the fourth chapter. And for the pericope for today, I'm coming from verse 13 down through verse 16. But for the essence of preaching today, I draw your attention to verse 13 and 14. This is Mordecai, the uncle of Esther, having a conversation with her, sending a message. Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, do not think that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silence at such a time as this, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another quarter. But you and your father's family will perish. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to royal dignity for just such a time as this. And so I put a pen in that and say that the time is now. The time is now. Wow, what a month. <laughs> what a month. In these short 24 days of the first month of the year 2021, we have experienced a lot. We have celebrated the dawn of a new year with so much hopefulness for healing and restoration, not just of normalcy or health, but for our nation also. We were, we were given hope that the pandemic would surely be ending. Not one, but two vaccines were available to protect us. We celebrated. We were relieved that the final hurdle to the prolonged and protracted election season was finally ending. With another celebration, two Democratic congressmen the son of a sharecropper and a descendant of immigrant Jews had been elected from a state known as much for its Confederate history as its civil rights history. We were looking forward to the vote of the Electoral College that would once and for all put this long, vitriolent, and divisive campaign season behind us. We were ready to celebrate again but then we were reminded that even with all of the success of the moment, we dare not forget why the battle was being fought. We were challenged to dare not sink into a place of comfortability and complicity, thinking we had overcome and the victory was now a guarantee. So evil raised its ugly head to remind us that we could not grow weary in well-doing that due season was still not here, and that we are still in the midst of a war and had only secured a partial victory of our, uh, a, a partial victory in a particular battle. The story of the impending insurrection of our national captain, capital flashed across our TV screens. Yes. Our watches and phones received alerts of a riot in which a race of people were seeking others to annihilate and to destroy because of their belief in their superiority, yeah. their entitlement to always win at any cost. It painted a stark and ominous picture of where we still are as a race of people, yeah. in which our lives are still in danger at the hand of an unjust law and uncaring legal system. Yeah. A system that if it had been anyone that looked like me, 
storming the Capitol and climbing up the east side of the Capitol, breaking windows, carrying weapons, the funeral bells would still be ringing today. The biblical story found in the book of Esther has some familiar strains of the time we find ourselves in right now. The story let me know that in trying that trying times may change, but our God is still the same. That even though the hands on the clock can be moved backward and forward by the law of man, God is still the only one that can cause the sun to rise and set without fail. So a word of encouragement came forth from this text to encourage God's people that even in these trying times we're facing, we have power beyond the laws of man. We have power beyond the constitutional constructs of this country and that in these trying times it is for such a time as this that God has called us forth to effect change. Yeah. We have just concluded the most divisive and prolonged election series season in our nation's history. Yeah. While also we have seen a nation gripped under the siege of a pandemic and suffering unfathomable deaths each day. Yes, we have celebrated the victory of a new president. We've all posted and tweeted our ecstatic joy over our new VP. The first woman to hold the position and the first one of color. We have worn our pearls and for some of us, we just learned what chucks really are. We were excited to witness civility return to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. We were also proud to see uh, First Lady Michelle Obama and President Obama stride down the steps and set the fashion world abuzz. Yeah. But it has also been a month of stark reminders of the current and trying times in which we live. Yeah. Yes, it was time to celebrate, but with the celebration comes a call to remain active, yeah. a call to continue to use our voice, a call to press on and not retreat back to complacency. Yeah, yeah. Time means different things to different people. Yeah, yeah. It can be your best friend or your worst enemy. <laughs> Most of us, especially today, would just like to have a little bit more of it. Right. But with what God has given us, he requires us to use it wisely, uh -huh. to use it for his purpose and his plan. There's a known and great African-American educator from Atlanta, Georgia, that made the statement, time is only just a minute, yes. with 60 seconds in it. Forced upon me, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to me to use it. I may suffer if I lose it, give account if I abuse it, just a tiny little minute, but an eternity is in it. The dictionary defines time as an appointed fixed or set period. Chronos, chronological time. We go from one o'clock to two o'clock to three o'clock. But today I want to introduce you to a new time called Kairos. It's God's appointed time. It's that time that your grandmama and your great grandmama used to talk about. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. The sign of the time that's referenced biblically throughout the Bible. Yes, and even in trying times we are faced in today. They can only be dealt with from a chronos mindset. Matthew 16 and 3 reminds us when it's evening, you say it will be fair weather because the sky is red. In the morning, it will be a stormy day for the sky is red. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the time. He reminds us, do you not know? Have you not heard? We are living in trying and perilous times. Even in the midst of times of unprecedented technological advances, we got Wi-Fi, we got Bluetooth, we got social media, Instagram, keyless entry. We can start our car from inside our house. We can pay our bills without ever leaving our home. We can shop for grocery. We can pick up, get our curbside pickup. We can find a date even from leaving the comfort of our home. We have some scientific advances, DNA testing that can determine your guilt or innocence, trace your family history back to its origin with just the swab of the interior of your mouth. Yeah. We can even uh, generate food. We don't even have to grow it anymore. 
We can make it in a lab. We can even, uh, some people even try to create human beings in a lab. And so, Lord, we done had so much. But unless we become too comfortable with all the gadgets and conveniences we've accumulated in our palaces, yeah. we are still living in trying times. Yeah. We have so much invention, but no one has invented a way to erase bigotry, mm -hmm. hatred, yeah. racial injustice. We're still living in trying times. Yeah. Times of increased violence in our homes, in our schools, on our jobs, and in our neighborhoods. I was just sitting here as I was preparing to receive the word, mm -hmm. and I got a, another technological advance from 11 Alive News that says, man driving Rolls Royce in Buckhead shot multiple times before crashing uh, into a tree, later dying. This just happened. Violence in the most unfantomal places. Uh, uh, yes, we won the election, but we still have to remind others that black lives matter. Yeah. Times of high unemployment yes. and even higher unemployment, yeah. underemployment, globalization, jobs leaving for other countries and none coming in. Yes, you may get another $1,400 stimulus check, but we still need access and inclusion in the workplace so you're able to save your own $1,400. Lest we forget, we are still the last hired, the first fired. We still have to be more qualified, work harder, be smarter. Yes, we can be the president of the United States and now even the vice president of the United States and still be disrespected by the old guard by making fun of our name, come up, come up, come up, whatever. Yeah. and disregarded because of the color of our skin. Yeah. We are still faced with times of disease and despair. Yeah. We are the minority, but we become the majority when we see the faces in the media who are killing and stealing. Yeah. We are the majority when we see the statistics for high blood pressure, diabetes, yeah. heart attacks, strokes, and AIDS, and yeah. now COVID-19. Uh -huh. We fill the school to prison pipeline with our young black males. Our young people are angry and disillusioned in these trying times. Times that our seniors are lonely and destitute. Times that a tyrant named Trump has, the, has unleashed the ugly face of racism and bigotry that we worked so hard to pretend had been defeated long ago. Times when our schools are still inadequate and health insurance is still unavailable. When gun violence is ignored by those in power as they pass laws and protect those who would arm themselves so that they can be protected from their fear of those like us. Times when the heathens are raging, trying times like Esther, God has called us into his kingdom for such a time as this. And, and if we're going to fulfill the mission, if we're going to fulfill the plan and purpose that God has for our lives, it's time to do something radically different. The time is now. Yes, we're experiencing some trying times. Times that will require women of faith, men of faith, children of faith, people of faith to make a change. We're experiencing a Kairos moment right now. We don't know how long the pandemic is going to last. We thought it was going to be over before now.
different nationalities. And she didn't want to uh, uh, sacrifice her position. She didn't want to speak out. She was afraid of being exposed. But I stopped by to let you know that some Esther's are up in this place. Some Esther's are sitting at home. Some Esther's are out on Facebook. And it's time to stop pretending. It's time And you are not speaking up. You're not doing anything. Sitting at home wondering why somebody else is not doing it. Oh, do not think that in your king's palace you will escape any more than the rest of us. You might not escape by sitting up in 645 Riverdale Road. You can't escape by sitting up in your palace in College Park. You can't Oh, man. 
it with me. I don't have time to play church. I take this thing seriously. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. And I know sometimes that rubs people the wrong way. But I realized I was created to be used by God. I have realized that God had a purpose when he designed me. Now, before I came to that realization, I wasted a lot of time. I'm going to be honest. Running after this, running after that, a whole lot of time doing nothing. I have people tell me now that I don't know how to do nothing. Tomorrow, I don't know about next week. I don't even know about this evening. 